What up, mathletes? Whoop, whoop. All right, we're on to the mod 11 review. Let's do this. Find the location of Q, the midpoint of PR. Just got to add these points together and divide by two. As I said with all my other training videos, I'm assuming you've worked through this or are completely stuck, so I'm just boot scooting through them. Pause as needed. So negative 12 uh, plus negative 2 divided by 2, which is going to be what? That's minus, so negative 14 over 2, which is negative 7. And we can test it. It's negative 7 to see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. See how that works? It's 5 from each point. So this is the point Q. Awesome. Y, the point Y is the midpoint of XC. So that is the midpoint. Find the location of X. So we need to find X somewhere over here, right? Some point X. Well, let's find a distance here. 14 minus 10 is, or excuse me, minus 4 equals 10. So because of that, I need to do 4 minus 10, which is negative 6. So this should be negative 6. If you ever want to check it, just add those two numbers together. Negative 6 plus 14 over 2 is going to be what? 8 over 2, which equals 4. And that is the midpoint right there. So location of x is at negative 6. In the figure below, C is between A and D, yeah? And B is the midpoint of AC, makes sense. If BD is 12 and BC equals 5, find AD. Okay, I want to ultimately find what this is. Well, if BC is 5, so is AB. Okay, and to find just CD here, I'm just going to do 12 minus 5, 12 minus 5 equals what, 7? So this is really 7 right here, or I guess I didn't even have to do that, I could have just done 12 plus 5, could have made this a lot easier, but nevertheless, it's 17, no matter how you slice it, AD equals 17. And I say that because if I had 12 plus my 5 here, since it was the midpoint, it has to be 5. 5 plus 12 is 17 also. There we go. Sometimes I make it more difficult. Oop, I just got to scoot the screen down. I was like, what's going on here? Find the midpoint of the line segment joining the points P and Q. Okay. Well, to do the midpoint, you just average... Your x's and your y's. So in other words, I'm going to look at my x's, 4 and 0. I'm going to have 4 plus 0 over 2. That's going to be my x value at the midpoint. I'm going to average my y's, negative 3 plus 1 over 2. Which is going to be what? This is 4. This is ultimately negative 2. So the midpoint is the point. 4 over 2 is 2. And negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. There we go. Which makes sense if we looked on that. It'd be kind of like 2, negative 1. That right there. That makes sense. Okay. Let's take a look at some angles here. We need to indicate whether they're right, acute, or obtuse. Remember, this is 90 degrees. This is less than 90 degrees. And this is greater than 90 degrees. So angle A, less than 90, is acute. Angle B, obtuse, greater than 90. Angle C, 60 degrees, less than 90, acute. Angle D is a right angle. That's it. Don't get hung up on those. It's not worth it. Use the figure and follow the directions below. Okay? Name the vertex of angle HFE. Let's follow it around. HFE. I can already tell you the vertex is always in the middle, guys. It's F. The sides of angle 2. 
Okay, angle to the sides. Again, that's HFE, right? Same angle. So the sides would be FE. Always go from the vertex. FE. So the sides are ray FE and ray FH. Write two other names for angle one. Well, angle one is right here. I can call it EFG. Angle EFG. I could also call it angle GFE. No matter what, that F has to be in the middle because it's the vertex. In the figure below, the measure of angle 1 equals 65 degrees. Measure of angle 2 equals 89 degrees. Okay? Find the measure of angle W. X, Z. Oh, the whole thing. Just add them up. 89 plus 65. Let's see. 4 and 15. 154 degrees. So the measure of angle W, X, Z equals 154 degrees. Boom. In the figure below, get out highlighters just in case. The measure of angle JKM, JKM. So the whole thing is 86 degrees. KN bisects it knocked off our degree measure there what the world that makes that problem unsolvable so you know what I'm gonna say the measure of L KM we're gonna call that I don't know, 52 degrees. I'm going to put two tick marks there, right? Two arcs there to measure different. That's going to be 52 degrees. And we know that KN is a bisector, right? So that means it's going to cut LKM into two equal angles. Find JKN. I want to find JKN. Well, first of all, if the whole thing's 86 degrees, and I know that this big angle is 52 degrees, and I'm marking that in as 52 degrees, I don't know what happened to that degree measure, but such is life, then I'm just going to say, all right, JKL, this little section right here, right, this one, two, three, is going to be uh, 86 minus 52. Four and three, 34 degrees. So this is 34 degrees. And here's what I know. From here to here is half of 52, which is 26 degrees. And then if I want to get this measure of JKN, correct? So I want to find JKN. That's going to be 34 plus 26, which equals measure of angle JKN equals 60 degrees. Boom. That's how we do it. You can get a little convoluted there, so make sure you pay attention and mark angles properly. Okay. An angle measures 110 degrees. What is the measure of its supplement? Supplement adds to 180. So that'd be 180 minus 110, which equals 70 degrees. An angle measures 28 degrees. What is the measure of its complement? A complement adds to 90. Should put degrees. So 90 minus 28 equals what? 62 degrees? There we go. Sweet. All right. Write two expressions for the perimeter of the figure, okay? 
So first of all, the perimeter is going to be 5x plus 9 plus 16. I just add up all the sides. And then I'm going to simplify it. When I simplify it, 9 plus 16 is 25, so this is 5x plus 25. That's all it means by two expressions. There are two different expressions. One simplified. It's a little bit longer of a section. I think we are about done with it. Yep, it was just a lot. It was a big section. We went through a lot of stuff. I want to make sure and review it. Find the area of this rectangle. 5 times 13 is 50. 65. 65 what though? Inches squared. Make sure you get those units on there. They give you that option. I don't want you to miss it. That'll lose points. The figure below shows a circular mirror. Its diameter is 26 centimeters. Use the calculator to find the area of the mirror using 3.14 for pi in your calculations. And do not round your answers. Make sure to include correct units. Well, for finding area, area equals pi r squared. This is the diameter. And we know that our radius is half the diameter. So what's 26 divided by 2 equals 13, so that's 13 centimeters. So we're going to have 3.14 times 13 squared, which that's just 169. So that's 3.14 times 169. Nine. 530.66. So that equals 530.66. What though? It's area, so it's square, square centimeters. So centimeters squared. Boom. Remember it said correct units. Don't miss out those points. Awesome. Circumference. Oh. Find the area and circumference. Oh, I didn't see that. So area is 530.66 cm squared. Now, I can either use, my circumference is either 2 pi r or just pi times diameter. I'm going to do pi times time, diameter. So circumference equals 3.14 times my diameter of 20. All right, so let's get this times 26. All right. 3.14 times 26, 81.64, 81.64, and what is that? 81.64 centimeters, make sure you have that in there. A silver wire will be placed around the mirror, which measures, okay, because this is a mirror, right? Which, which measure would be used in finding the amount of wire needed? The circumference, you're putting a wire around it. The mirror's glass will be replaced. Which measure will be used to find the amount of glass needed? The area. Boom. Look at that. We're busting through, y'all. This is definitely the longer of the sections, though. Our last couple right here. The figure below has a point marked with a large dot. First, translate the figure eight units to the right and four units up. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or what am I doing? And then four units up. One, two, three, four. Here's the point. And we're going to do that with all of them, right? So down two, back one, down two, back one. Left, one, two, three, one, two, three. Up two over one, up two over one. Boom, right there. And then give the coordinates of the marked point on the figure. Well, the coordinates of the marked point point on the original figure was negative 4, negative 6. And guys, here's the easy thing. Honestly, to give the point in the final figure, it was just, what, 8 units to the right, so plus 8. And the 4 units up, so plus 4. So it's going to end up being 4, negative 2. And let's see if that's true. 4, negative 2, right there. Boom, look at that. Okay. Easy stuff there. Well, not easy necessarily, but works good. And our last question from this section before we go on to Module 12. In the coordinate plane, the points 
uh, a negative 2, negative 4, blah, 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 are reflected over the y-axis to the points a prime, b prime, and c prime, respectively. What are the coordinates of a prime, b prime, and c prime? Well, if they're reflected over the y-axis, notice this. So I'm just going to use this up here. Let's say I have the point, uh, what is this, 3, 4. If I reflect it over the y, I'm going to go back to the y, 3, and then over 1, 2, 3. And what point am I at now? I'm at negative 3, 4. What's the only thing that changed? The x value. So when you reflect over the y, it just takes the x value and makes it opposite. So this is going to be 2, negative 4, uh, 9, 10, negative 11, negative 3. See how it just changed? the x values in each of these. If I were to reflect this, guys, over the x, watch what happens. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to go down to negative 4. Boom, right there. And that would be the point 3, negative 4. So over the x-axis, it makes the y-opposite. Across the y-axis, it makes the x-opposite. So just keep that in mind. That's what a reflection does. All right, guys. With that said, <coughs> peace out.